Uh, this podcast is about periodic trends. Now, what is a trend? Uh, within particular groups in the periodic table, there are general properties that tend to occur within a group. Um, so a trend is following a general course or having a prevailing tendency. Each group in the periodic table that is a vertical column has similar outer valence electrons. Those outer level electrons tend to impart certain properties and from these properties we can predict particular patterns within the periodic table. Similar elements therefore are clustered together so all the metals are together on the left side of the periodic table, all the metalloids are kind of in the right middle side of the table and then all the nonmetals are on the far right side of the table. Um, this same kind of idea um, happens across the periodic table. You can predict what's going to happen as you go from the left side of the table to the right side of the table, just as you can predict what's going to happen um, from the top of a group down to the bottom of a group. Now we're going to look at several different trends, and the first one that we're going to address is atomic radius. As you go down a group within the periodic table, you are adding an energy level each period that you go down in the table. And as you add an energy level, you're actually increasing the atomic size. You're making that electron cloud larger. Now, as you go across a period within the periodic table, you are adding protons. So each box across the periodic table, you're adding one proton. And as you add a proton, you're increasing the nuclear charge. As the nuclear charge increases, the positive pull of that nucleus is going to pull electrons in, and you're subsequently going to reduce the size of the atom. Now here's a table which shows actually what we've just described here. As you go down a group, that very first group, group 1A, you can see the atomic radius increasing as we add energy levels. As you go across that first period, you can see from lithium across to neon that the size of the atoms get increasingly smaller, and that's due, of course, to the increasing nuclear charge. Now we've discussed atomic radius, so we probably should take a look at ionic radius. Now an atom, um, when it loses or gains an electron, it will become charged, and we no longer call it an atom. We actually refer to it as an ion. When a metal um, becomes charged, it typically will lose an electron, and so it will take on a positive charge. When it takes on this positive charge, it has fewer electrons than its respective atoms, so that means the nucleus is a little bit stronger, and so what it will do is it will pull in the electrons, and you'll get a smaller um, ion. So typically, uh, metallic ions tend to be smaller than the atom from which they are uh, derived. Now nonmetals are the opposite of this of course. They gain electrons to take on a negative charge and because you have a greater number of electrons the pull from the nucleus is a little weaker and so you tend to get a larger uh, ion than the atom from which it is derived. Now the third periodic trend that we need to address is ionization energy. Ionization energy is pretty much like what it sounds. It's the amount of energy needed to ionize an atom. So it's the amount of energy needed to remove an electron from the atom. We're specifically going to address first ionization energy. First ionization energy is the energy needed to remove the most loosely held electron from the atom. And here is a chemical formula showing sodium and the energy imparted, which then will take the electron from sodium and you'll get a positively charged sodium ion. Typically, the more protons in the nucleus, the more energy it takes to remove this outermost electron. Now, when we look at trends within the periodic table, the noble gases tend to have really, really high ionization energies. So the far right in the table, high ionization energies. The um, greater number of protons within the nucleus makes it harder for an electron to be removed. The halogens, which are right next to the noble gases, tend to have a high ionization energy, but not quite as high as the noble gases. And then the alkali metals, which are on the far left side of the periodic table, they tend to have a very low ionization energy. 
um, because they have the fewest number of electrons in that particular period. Now we have a table which shows the ionization energies and you can see that they increase um, going from left to right in the table and they decrease going from the top to the bottom. Um, the reason that they decrease going from top to bottom is that electron that is being removed is farther from the nucleus at the bottom of the table than it is at the top of the table. So it's going to be more easily removed because it's at a greater distance from the nucleus. Now the last trend that we need to take a look at is electronegativity. Um, but let's take a look at uh, all those factors which uh, affect uh, ionization energy first. We spoke of nuclear charge, so the greater the nuclear charge, uh, the greater the ionization energy. This happens across a period. Um, shielding effect, as we increase the number of energy levels, um, as we go down a group, we uh, decrease the ionization energy. And then of course the atomic radius, as that atomic radius gets bigger as we go down a group, then the ionization energy will also decrease. Okay, so now let's take a look at that electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom in a chemical compound to attract an electron. Fluorine in the periodic table happens to be the most electronegative. Electronegativity increases across a period because the increasing nuclear charge every time you add a proton, it's going to pull those electrons into that particular atom. So you're increasing the ability of the atom to draw an electron in. Now as you go down a group within the periodic table, every time you add an energy level, you're shielding that nucleus. You're blocking the nuclear charge from pulling any electrons in. So as you go down a group within the periodic table, the electronegativity is going to decrease. And that's illustrated pretty well in um, the following table. You're going to see electronegativities increasing across and you're going to see electronegativities decreasing going down. So we've addressed um, four different trends. We've taken a look at atomic radius, uh, ionic radius, ionization energy, and electronegativity.